St. John in the Virgin Islands. Nestled amidst the turquoise waters of the Caribbean Sea, St. John's Island stands as a pristine gem awaiting discovery. And, in this video we'll go over all interesting points and the not so. Stay until the end and we'll let you know the best month to catch a festival or event. St. John is located in the enchanting archipelago of the U.S. Virgin Islands. This tropical paradise boasts a rich tapestry of natural beauty and cultural heritage. With its powdery white sand beaches and lush rainforests, and vibrant coral reefs, St. John's Island beckons travelers seeking solace in its idyllic surroundings. Whether you're drawn to explore historic ruins, embark on adventurous hikes, or simply unwind under swaying palm trees, this captivating island promises an unforgettable escape into paradise, where every moment is a postcard perfect memory in the making. Also, here are some pros and cons of visiting or living on St. John's Island. Let's start with the pros. It boasts breathtaking natural landscapes, including pristine beaches, lush rainforests, and stunning coral reefs, offering endless opportunities for outdoor recreation and exploration. With its relatively small population and laid-back atmosphere, it provides a peaceful escape from the hustle and bustle of city life, making it an ideal destination for relaxation and rejuvenation. The island is committed to ecotourism and sustainable tourism practices, with many eco-friendly accommodations, tours, and activities available for environmentally conscious travelers. The island is rich in history, with a fascinating blend of indigenous, African, and European influences evident in its architecture, cuisine, and traditions. From snorkeling and diving to sailing and kayaking, St. John's Island offers a variety of water-based activities. Don't forget to subscribe to help us grow our YouTube channel. And, what are the cons? Like many Caribbean destinations, the cost of living on St. John's Island can be relatively high, especially when it comes to housing, groceries, and dining out. As a small island, it may have limited infrastructure compared to larger cities, which could impact services like healthcare, transportation, and utilities. It is vulnerable to hurricanes and tropical storms during the Atlantic hurricane season, June to November, which can disrupt travel plans and pose safety concerns. Despite its beauty, St. John's Island is remote and isolated, with limited access to mainland amenities and services. This may not be suitable for everyone, especially those who prefer easy access to urban conveniences. During peak tourist seasons, it can become crowded with visitors, especially around popular attractions and beaches, detracting from the tranquility of the experience. Here are the answers to potential questions about St. John's Island in the Caribbean. Time to visit is cooler months from December to April, which also coincides with the peak tourist season. However, keep in mind that this is also the most expensive time to visit. Must-visit attractions include Trunk Bay Beach, Annaberg Plantation, Cinnamon Bay Ruins, and Virgin Islands National Park. While there are taxis and rental car services available, the island's size makes it feasible to explore by foot, bicycle, or scooter for those staying in the main town of Cruz Bay. The island is home to numerous hiking trails, including the Reef Bay Trail, Ramhead Trail, and Francis Bay Trail, offering breathtaking views of the island's landscapes and wildlife. Visitors can enjoy snorkeling, scuba diving, sailing, kayaking, paddleboarding, and even chartering boats to explore nearby caves and islands. It offers a variety of dining options ranging from casual beach bars to fine dining restaurants, serving a mix of Caribbean cuisine and international flavors. Yes, St. John's Island is a great destination for families, with plenty of kid-friendly activities, calm beaches, and opportunities for outdoor adventures suitable for all ages. Visitors should be mindful of coral reefs while snorkeling or diving, avoid feeding wildlife, and be cautious of insects such as mosquitoes, especially during the rainy season. Yes, it hosts various cultural events and festivals throughout the year, including the St. John Festival, Carnival, and various music and arts events. Stay until the end to see the festivals and events by month. The island prioritizes sustainable tourism practices, including recycling programs, beach cleanups, and eco-friendly accommodations that minimize environmental impact. It is home to several historic ruins and here the most notable ones. Annaberg Plantation is a well-preserved sugar plantation dating back to the 18th century. Visitors can explore the ruins of the sugar factory, windmill, slave quarters, and other buildings, gaining insight into the island's colonial past and the legacy of the sugar industry. Catherineburg Sugar Mill Ruins is located in the heart of the island, it stands as a testament to St. John's sugar-producing history. Keneal Bay Plantation, now part of Virgin Islands National Park, was once a thriving sugar plantation established in the 18th century. 
Reef Bay Sugar Mill Ruins is nestled in the lush forest of Virgin Islands National Park, it offers a picturesque setting to explore the remnants of a sugar plantation dating back to the 18th century. Peace Hill Windmill is a 18th-century historic stone windmill situated atop a hill overlooking the picturesque waters of Hawksnest Bay. Fort Bird Ruins built in the 18th century, the remains of a colonial-era fortification perched atop a hill overlooking Coral Bay. Brown Bay Estate features the ruins of a former sugar plantation and estate house nestled along the scenic Brown Bay Beach. Here's a list of festivals and events on St. John's Island in the Caribbean along with descriptions and dates. The St. John Festival, also known as Carnival, is a vibrant celebration of the island's culture and heritage. June 28 to July 4. The festivities culminate with fireworks on the 4th of July, commemorating the U.S. Independence Day. Love City Live Festival is an annual event that brings together local and international musicians for a week-long celebration of music, art, and culture. February 21 to 25th. The St. John Film Society hosts screenings of independent and international films throughout the year, showcasing a diverse selection of cinematic works. Various dates. Yes, don't forget. The annual St. John Blues Festival brings together acclaimed blues musicians from around the world for a weekend of soulful performances against the backdrop of St. John's stunning scenery. March 21 to 24. The St. John Arts Festival celebrates the island's vibrant arts community with a week-long showcase of visual arts, live performances, workshops, and exhibitions. February 12 to 16. The St. John Agriculture Fair highlights the island's agricultural traditions and local produce through educational displays, November 19 to 22. The annual St. John Festival Princess Pageant showcases the grace, talent, and intelligence of young women from the local community, June 20. Independence Day celebrations on St. John's Island are marked by patriotic fervor and festivities, including flag-raising ceremonies, July 4. The St. John Carnival Parade is the highlight of the island's carnival celebrations, featuring colorful floats, costume dancers, marching bands, and revelers of all ages. July 4. The Coral Bay Thanksgiving Regatta is an annual sailing event that brings together sailors and boating enthusiasts for a weekend of friendly competition and camaraderie. The average prices for accommodations can vary greatly depending on the location, season, type of accommodation, and amenities offered. Luxury Hotels Prices can range from $200 to $500 or more per night for a standard room, with suites and premium amenities costing significantly more. Resorts Luxury resorts can range from $300 to $1,000 or more per night, depending on the destination and level of luxury. Boutique Hotels these upscale, intimate hotels may charge anywhere from $150 to $400 per night, offering personalized service and unique amenities. High-end villas or vacation rentals can range from $500 to several thousand dollars per night, especially for large groups or luxury properties with exclusive features. Prices for budget hotels typically range from $50 to $150 per night for a standard room, offering basic amenities and services. Hostels. Hostel prices can vary widely, but dormitory beds usually range from $10 to $50 per night, while private rooms may cost $30 to $100 or more. Guest houses. Guest houses or bed and breakfasts can range from $50 to $150 per night, providing a cozy and affordable accommodation option with breakfast included. Prices for homestays or shared accommodations on platforms like Airbnb can vary greatly depending on the location and type of property, but they generally range from $30 to $150 per night for budget options. It's always a good idea to research and compare prices across different booking platforms to find the best deals for your budget and preferences. Here's a general estimation of restaurants' average prices you might expect. Fine dining. Prices at high-end fine dining establishments can range from $100 to $300 or more per person for a multi-course meal, excluding drinks, tax, and gratuity. Michelin-starred restaurants. Dining at a Michelin-starred restaurant can be even more expensive, with prices typically starting from $200 and going up to $500 or more per person for a tasting menu experience at a top-rated restaurant. Casual dining. Prices at casual dining establishments, such as cafes, diners, or mid-range restaurants, can range from $10 to $30 per person for a meal, including a main course and possibly a drink or side dish. Fast food. Fast food restaurants typically offer the most affordable dining options, with prices for a meal combo ranging from $5 to $10 per person. Street food. Street food vendors and food stalls offer some of the cheapest dining options, with prices often ranging from $1 to $10 for a snack or meal, depending on the location and type of cuisine. It's always a good idea to check menus, reviews, and prices beforehand to ensure that a restaurant fits within your budget.
Here are rough estimations of the average prices for various water-based activities in popular tourist destinations. Prices for guided snorkeling tours typically range from $30 to $100 per person for a half-day excursion, including equipment rental, transportation to the snorkeling site, and sometimes snacks or refreshments. For beginners, a Discover scuba diving experience may cost around $100 to $200 per person, including equipment rental, instruction, and a shallow dive with a certified instructor. Certified divers can expect to pay approximately $50 to $150 for a single tank dive, while multiple dives or dive packages may offer discounts. Prices for day sailing tours can range from $50 to $200 or more per person, depending on the duration of the tour, the size of the vessel, and included amenities such as meals or drinks. Renting a private sailboat or catamaran for a day can cost anywhere from $500 to $2,000 or more, depending on the size of the boat, the duration of the charter, and any additional services provided. Guided kayak tours typically range from $30 to $100 per person for a half-day or full-day excursion, including equipment rental, instruction, and sometimes snacks or refreshments. Renting a kayak independently may cost around $20 to $50 per hour or $50 to $100 per day, depending on the location and type of kayak. Prices for guided paddleboarding tours are similar to kayak tours, ranging from $30 to $100 per person for a half-day or full-day excursion, including equipment rental and instruction. Renting a paddleboard independently may cost around $20 to $50 per hour or $50 to $100 per day, depending on the location and type of paddleboard. Prices for chartering boats to explore nearby cays and islands can vary widely depending on the size and type of vessel, as well as the duration of the charter. On average, expect to pay anywhere from $500 to $2,000 or more for a half-day or full-day charter, with larger vessels and additional amenities commanding higher prices. Bargaining for prices can vary depending on the specific activity, location, and cultural norms of the destination. In many tourist destinations, especially in markets or with independent operators, bargaining for prices may be more common. This can include activities like guided tours, souvenir shopping, or hiring local guides for excursions. However, for established tour companies or activities with fixed prices, bargaining may not be as accepted. Bargaining for transportation services such as taxis, tuk-tuks, or rickshaws is often expected, especially in countries where haggling is a cultural norm. It's common to negotiate fares before starting the journey, particularly for short distances or when using informal transportation options. Bargaining is typically acceptable when shopping at street markets, bazaars, or from street vendor. Hi! Don't forget to help us with your subscription. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate your commenting too.